What's a wave? This is a difficult question to answer properly, but the best answer for our purposes is this. Wave is a disturbance that, tra that transfers energy as it moves forward. To help us understand this, here's an example. So if I stretched out a slinky and I held one end, I could make a wave travel along the slinky in one of two ways. First way is I could move my hand up and down. I could oscillate my hand up and down. The second way is I could oscillate my hand forwards and backwards. Either way, the wave will travel along the slinky. So the wave and its energy moves along the slinky. And the wave is started by this disturbance that I'm creating with my hand at one end. So oscillating up and down causes what's called a transverse wave and oscillating back and forth causes what's called a longitudinal wave. A transverse wave is when the displacement is perpendicular to the direction of travel. So like we said earlier, the wave travels along the slinky this way. With a transverse wave, they're created when the displacement or the oscillation is perpendicular, which means at 90 degrees, to the direction of travel of the wave. So if I move my hand upwards and downwards, that will create a transverse wave, which will travel along the slinky. Transverse waves have peaks, also known as crests, and they have troughs. Longitudinal waves are when the displacement is parallel to the direction of travel. So again, the wave travels along the slinky this way. The displacement or the disturbance or the oscillation created by my hand is parallel to the direction of travel of the wave. So I move my hand forwards and backwards and that will create a wave that travels along the slinky. And it's a wave called a longitudinal wave. Longitudinal waves don't have peaks and troughs, but they do have compressions. And a compression is where you see it's closer together. And they have what are called rarefactions. And that's where they are m further apart there. So we don't have peaks and troughs with a long longitudinal wave. We have compressions and we have rarefactions. There are two main categories of waves. Um, the first is mechanical waves and then we have electromagnetic waves or EM waves for short. Mechanical waves require a physical substance to travel through and that's what's known as a medium. So they need a medium to travel through. So for example, water waves need water to travel through. Without the water, there would be no water wave. It would be impossible for the water wave to travel. Seismic waves, which are created during earthquakes, travel through the earth. So their medium is the earth. Before a sound wave reaches your ear, normally it will travel through the air. So the air is the medium, in this case, for sound waves. Sound waves can travel not just through the air, they can also travel through liquids and solids. But in this case, what we're talking about, the air would be the medium of the sound wave. Electromagnetic waves don't need a medium. That's because they are oscillations of electric and magnetic fields, so they don't need a medium. And they can actually travel through the vacuum of space, whereas a sound wave or a seismic or water wave could not do that. 
Another thing to know is that electromagnetic waves are transverse. Whereas mechanical waves can be either transverse or longitudinal. For example, uh, sound waves are actually longitudinal. But water waves are transverse. Okay, so that was just a quick introduction to waves. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, make sure you like the video. And for more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel.